Hi everybody, this is Tom Baker from the Photographer's Lounge and today I just want to share a quick HDR tip. Uh, this tip is a follow-up to one that I did a few weeks ago and that one we were using Adobe CS5 or CS6 plus Lightroom 4.1 to directly edit 32-bit images inside of Lightroom. It was a, a technique that I like to use these days when I want to create a very nice realistic HDR image. Uh, and I really like doing the editing inside of Lightroom 4 because I'm very comfortable editing photos inside of Lightroom 4 like a lot of you are. Uh, the only problem with that technique is one, you need to have Adobe CS5 or CS6 and that's a fair amount of money for a lot of people. And two, it's kind of time consuming. It's not the fastest process in the world. Plus, you have to go in and round trip it and save the file back into Lightroom and things like that. So today I happen to be on the HDRsoft website. HDRsoft uh, is the maker of Photomatix Pro. That's the software I use for most of my HDR editing. On their website, I saw mention of a new plugin for Lightroom. I, I guess the plugin's a few months old, but the, the plugin is a, a merge to 32-bit uh, file plugin that will allow you to skip the whole Adobe CS5 or CS6 part and just create a 32-bit TIFF image that then is automatically imported back into Lightroom for you to edit. Now, unfortunately, the plugin isn't free if you're not already a Photomatix Pro owner. Uh, I think it's $29 US, but if you are a Photomatix Pro owner, like a lot of you are, and you owned it before the plugin came out, uh, they are offering a free license. It's easy to get. You just click on the button that comes up and give your email address that you registered Photomatix Pro to, and they'll send you a license. So we're going to demonstrate it real quick. I ran through this a few minutes ago and I did some time comparison, which we'll get into in just a second. Uh, the first thing I did was select a few brackets from a, a shot that I took a few weeks ago in Cleveland, Ohio, my hometown. Uh, we're going to right click on the file and just like you would inside of Lightroom to uh, export into Photomatix Pro, we're going to go in, right click and go down to merge to 32-bit HDR. We'll click that. It'll give you a few options here. Uh, if you know that you were nice and steady on your tripod and you don't need to uh, make sure that the images are aligned, you can take this off and save a few seconds. I think my tripod ball head may have slipped a little bit, so I'm going to leave it on. I always use by matching feature and pers uh, perspective correction. I don't need ghost. I don't need remove noise. The naming stuff looks fine. And uh, I think we're good here, so I'm going to click merge. Then I'm going to pause the video and come back when this is done. Now this will take about two minutes. Uh, I timed it a few uh, right before this. It's about two minutes and four seconds, and uh, it was one-stop shopping. No exporting to another program and saving back. Once I click merge, I don't have to do another thing until it comes back. So uh, let's click merge, and I'll show you the final result. And here we go. Approximately two minutes and four seconds later, we have our finished file already back into Lightroom. I didn't have to do anything. I didn't have to save it like I would have in CS5 or 6. Uh, you can see there's a lot of information in this photo. Uh, let's go in here. Let's zoom in on the uh, on the clock. I've already brought the highlights down some. Uh, they were. This is the default. You can see they were a little blown out, but we have enough range. I can pull that in without losing anything. Uh, when I bring up the shadows, so I'm able to see all the shadow in the statue here. Things are pretty well aligned. I can even see the inscription on the back here. Remember, I was shooting in the middle of a snowstorm when I took this picture, uh, and it was pretty dark, pretty cold, and a little bit windy. So I'm, I'm impressed that it actually did as good of a job as it did merging all of the, uh, the files together and aligning them. So that's how it looks when it comes back in. Now, just for a quick comparison, I ran the same files through... CS6 and you end up with an image that's very similar. They come out looking a little different. Uh, I, I find that CS6 imports it back in a little darker than the uh, than the HDR soft plugin does, but all of the range is there. Uh, I was most interested, this is the, the one from CS6. Things were still aligned correctly, things still look good. I can come down and do the same thing, recover all of the, the details and the highlights bring up the shadows and uh, I might have to play with the exposure a little bit more whoa not that much but you can see it's all all that detail is there or all that information is there so see you end up with a photo that looks remarkably the same in either uh, the difference is 
This plugin is either free or $29, and CS5 or CS6 are several hundred. On the other hand, this plugin is a one-trick pony, but if this is the trick you need, I gotta say it's a pretty good value and it's a whole lot faster uh, to do. And like I said, one-click button versus multiple steps, etc. So there you have it. If you have any questions, feel free to write us, and please stay tuned for more uh, tips and information from the Photographer's Lounge. Thank you.